Well, let's talk about Dynamite. So it opened with an awesome match. Cody Rhodes and Sammy Guevara. And uh, they had a great, great ladder match. You know what I liked about it, too? Was uh, they wrestled a lot in it. It was a wrestling match with a ladder. And, uh, you know, some of these ladder matches that you see, there's like 5,000 spots, 5,000 stunts. And when the match is over, it's like, name one of them. And you think about it, you're like, oh, yeah, I remember that one. And then, but there's like so many that you can't even remember off the top of your head. Not this one. There were three. One of them was a delay, not just a superplex off like the third rung from the top of a tall ladder, a delayed superplex off the top of the ladder. There was a uh, double, I can't call it a springboard because there's no spring, but a double jump cutter from one ladder to another by Sammy Guevara, which was awesome. And then the old Jeff Hardy senton off the top of a very tall ladder onto a dude on a ladder bridge. The ladder bridge decided to go into business for itself and not break. I almost killed both guys. Those were like the three big spots in the match. It gave you time to breathe in the middle of these crazy spots. You didn't forget them. And at the end, Sammy whacked him in the head with the belts, knocked him off the ladder, climbed up. He is the unified North American champion. Man, this match was great. Great, great opener. I'm glad you mentioned how well-paced it was. Yes. Because it really was great, and it was well-paced and... I think everybody has seen the gif now of that double jump from Sammy going over the ladder and you know, dropping that cutter on Cody, which Cody, I mean, everything about it was perfect. I don't know if you do that nine more times if you're able to get it that perfect and get the aesthetic that right. My God, they did. And everybody's going to talk about that, but in some ways that delayed vertical suplex by Cody on the Sammy was I, I, almost more impressive, I would say certainly as impressive, and a tragedy averted, too, because as Sammy is getting suplexed over, they have that, that hanger holding those belts, and you could hear it in Tony's voice. I don't know if he saw it or if he was just selling it, but I think he saw it, where Sammy is on the top, they're at the top of that ladder, and they're going back. And Sammy's foot could have gotten caught in that hangar. He honestly could have. Thankfully, it didn't. It was a spectacular visual. There were several of them, like Brian mentioned. The the whole deal with the the, the back, uh, you know, Sammy's back on that on the uh, ladder on Cody and the way he bent. He is certainly going to be sitting in a tub of ice this morning, but a huge success for both guys. What a way to kick off the show. What a way to kick off Sammy's second title reign as well. We had Warlow winning a two-on-one handicap match massively over in his hometown. We had the Inner Circle beating Daniel Garcia in 2.0. The story of the match was Santana Ortiz were upset at Jericho. They refused to tag him in. They're basically doing a two-on-three match. At the end of the match, Jericho is all frustrated. He just leaves ringside. Uh, he leaves the uh, apron. But he's on the floor, and so he manages to give the back elbow to Matt Lee, and then Matt Lee ends up getting pinned. And then Jericho on the ramp stares down Santana and Ortiz. The story is, hey, you guys thought you could do this without me. I'm the one that won the match. So the dissension between these three continues. They announced Lance Archer and Hangman Page will do a Texas death match in two weeks. We have Jurassic Express and the Hardy family office. Uh, it'll be Private Party getting a championship match on Rampage. We won't do any spoilers today, but that's going to be one of the big matches on the show. Great segment with CM Punk and MJF. All you nerds that cried about how dare I criticize the stuff they'd done with Wardlow and CM Punk. Well, they talked their way back into it. And uh, the big news is they are going to do the match next week in Chicago. It is CM Punk versus MJF. And they had a fantastic, fantastic... Did I mention the word fantastic? You know what it was? It was stupendous! A talking segment they had back and forth. And uh, next week, the first match. I presume the first of many. Can you rewind back for a second? Is there anything I may have missed on Rampage or anything like that where Lance Archer challenged Hangman Page to a Texas death match? No, he challenged him on this show. I know. That's what just gets me is they actually had a video package ready and ready to go. And it's like, why would the hangman actually accept this other than he's a champion? But he's I just a champion. That's why the way it was done in the video where it's like, did he say Texas death match? And I know that's part of the gimmick, but it's like, 
I, I don't know. It kind of felt like a hat on a hat for no reason because it's like, just just have the match. Lance Archer's been killing people. They've been going at each other. I didn't think it was necessary. I mean, making I'll it tell no you why DQ it was would necessary. have been fine. But, I mean, to me, it's like you, you gimmicked it up kind of no. extra for I'll tell you why, why is that no for I'll tell this you blood why. feud. The blood feud between because uh, Archer and Paige. It's simple. <laughs> it's simple. Okay. Why was I upset about when uh, Lance Archer laid out uh, Hangman on the first week and then Hangman sent him packing on week two? Why was I upset about that? Do you remember? Not enough heat on Archer? Because Archer needs all the help he can get because no one in their right mind. No one. You want to do a poll? Don't do it on my Twitter. But, how, but, how, but I know where you're going with because that. Because Lance's how Texas specialty death match because it's his match? Is his, the specialty for Lance Archer is the Texas death match. So literally, like, maybe five fans now will think, oh, it's a specialty, so he can beat Hangman if it's a Texas death match. You don't do a Texas death match? Like, zero. There's nobody that thinks that this guy is going to beat the Hangman. Well, that, I think, is the why match. they did it. I know, and I don't want to say, you know, and I shouldn't have said don't do the match right there, but I, you need to do then a better job of building that match. I, I don't know. To me, it's a jump start that is unnecessary because you might need that Texas death match, you know, down the line. You might want to have Archer and somebody else. You might want to have a gimmick match for the world title that's built up and meant more. I mean, to me... To me, it's just a waste uh, of doing something that didn't need to be done when the result is probably not in doubt anyway. But that's, again, th those are just nits being picked. So after the uh, MGF Wardlow segment, or MGF and uh, Punk segment, MGF sends his goons down to the ring, and they beat up CM Punk, and he commands Wardlow to powerbomb him onto the chair. So MGF's plan is, yes, I'm going to take this match in Chicago next week, but I made sure that my guys badly injured him going into the match. Acclaim called out John Moxley. Anthony Bowens will face Moxley on Friday. No spoilers on this show. Layla Hirsch beat Red Velvet. I think the less said about this match, the better. It was quite not good. Preposterously booked, poorly Long. wrestled, Ugh. and uh, Layla Hirsch won. And then it uh, looks like they're going to Layla Hirsch and uh, Chris Statlander. Uh, Britt Baker did a promo, which uh, was just... There were so many weird things about this promo. So, literally, the whole promo... She's a champion, and we don't know who her next challenger is going to be. They did the whole promo, and never once... She never called anyone out, nor did anyone come out and like challenge her or anything like that. The whole promo was just her putting herself over... And burying Cleveland. The problem was she was blaming or she uh, first off, these fans like they're heckling her, but then she goes, D and they all cheer, DMD. And then, you know, she's burying Cleveland, they boo her. And then she talks about how she's the greatest, and they go, Yeah, you are the greatest, and they cheer. Then she's trying to get heat by burying this bloke named Baker Mayfield, because her last name is Baker, and she's talking about how she's the better baker. Um, which actually be, you know. Anyway, so I've been told... She, she is, though. I don't know anything about uh, football, but I was told by a bunch of people, they, they texted me this morning, they go, you know, a lot of people in Cleveland actually don't like Baker Mayfield, so right. she's burying him, and now they're cheering her again, so it's just up and down this whole promo, These and then it was over. Getting, they ain't getting Russell Wilson. Stop that. Be happy with what you got. So, uh, Rampage Friday. No spoilers. John no Moxley spoilers. versus Anthony Bowens. <laughs> FTR versus Lee Johnson and Brock Anderson. Jade Cargill versus Julia Hart. And Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus versus Private Party for the I'm titles. sensing a trend here. Just sensing one. I don't People know. People get so mad at the idea of hearing spoilers for Rampage, and it's like, do you turn your own brain off for three days? Do you not allow yourself to think of the card before the show airs? Anyway. Main event was unsanctioned lights out match. Orange Cassidy, uh, Orange Cassidy and Adam Cole. Cassidy, <laughs> more cash. Baby. He's got a lot of money after his win over Adam Cole in this unsanctioned match. <laughs> and uh, I'll talk more about this tonight. But uh, I didn't like the finish. Way too goofy for me. And what's funny is, you ever listen to Lance on this yeah, show? I have Lance Storm. Yeah. You know, I don't like to put Lance over because he gets a big old head. <laughs> But what I like about Lance is, if Lance doesn't like something, you know, he'll he'll tell you what he doesn't like about it, and then he'll tell you how they could have done it better. You know what I'm saying? It's a good idea. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to tell you what I didn't like about it, 
but what they could have done to just make it better. So anyway, uh, Orange Cassidy won in, at Beach Break, because that's the name of his move, which he didn't use at the end. But anyway, he won, and so uh, the feud appears to be over for the time being. And listen, I don't know what they're going to do with this pay-per-view, but uh, and listen, I've I've thought I didn't like things before, and they've managed to make it work. But in no universe do I beat Adam Cole. Even in an uns- I know people go that doesn't count on the record. He got beaten here. I don't do that if he's going to be facing the champion at the pay per view. Maybe he is. Maybe they have a way to rehab him or whatever. But I mean, he was undefeated going into this, and yes technically he's still undefeated but he's been beaten and i wouldn't have done that if he's challenging hangman for the title in uh, march which is uh you know five weeks away but we'll see what they end up doing but that was the match are you uh as far as you're not taking a victory lap for opening up the forbidden door and once again showing everybody that the path to AEW goes through brian alvarez whether it be in the ring or on this very show you know, I wanted to talk about Dan Housen after the break, but Maria's on. And plus, I'm just disgusted by this whole Oreo the Orca, you know. Now all of a sudden he's his best friend. I know it. It is Wrestling Observer Live today. I'm Oreo the Orca. Do you have a blowhole rating system? Like, if you're really excited about a match, it gives you yeah, six this, squirts? this match was, was uh, two and three-quarter holes, if you must know. So I was watching this show, and they had a bunch of videos for this Liv Morgan about how, oh, my whole life I've been a wrestling fan. Oh, I'm going to win my first title ever. There's children cheering and going, oh, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I do indeed. <laughs> hey, Danhausen, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear Danhausen? Hey, look at that holy hey. mother of God. Look what we've done here. You broke a leg. Is that true? Uh, it was broken in half, snapped in two. The doctor said it was a tibia and a fibia. Uh, I'm a whale and not a doctor, but is it not a fibula and not a fibia? A fibula? What I know. Perhaps what? the doctor lied to Dan Housen. You know, Dan Housen, if you were a whale, you wouldn't have broken your leg. This is true because whales don't have legs. What did you grow up watching as a little evil man? Kane ripping off the door when he debuted. Yes. How old were you, Dan Housen, when that match took place? Oh, about, uh, what was that, 1997, so about 700 years old. Oh, also, one time Dan Housen had Dolph Ziggler's theme song as his alarm, and it went off in class. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yes, it's true. Dan Housen likes Dolph Ziggler. You like Dolph Ziggler? He's good matches. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.